Geza, or Tel Geza, in Arabic, Dash Tel Jezar or Tel El Jezari, the site of the abandoned Arab village of Abu Shusha, is an archaeological site in the foothills of the Judean mountains at the border of the Shela region, roughly midway between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. It is now Israeli National Park. In the Hebrew Bible, Geza is associated with Joshua and Solomon. It became a major fortified Canaanite city-state in the first half of the second millennium BCE. It was later destroyed by fire and rebuilt. The Amarna letters mention kings of Geza swearing loyalty to the Egyptian pharaoh. Its importance was due in part to the strategic position it held at the crossroads of the ancient coastal trade route linking Egypt with Syria, Anatolia, and Mesopotamia, and the road to Jerusalem and Jericho, both important trade routes. Chapter 1 – Etymology and Sources Chapter 1 Section 1 – Ancient Egyptian Sources Geza is mentioned in the Victory Steel of Menapto, dating from the end of the 13th century BCE. Chapter 1 Section 2 – Biblical Conquest under Joshua The biblical story of the Israelite conquest of Canaan under their leader Joshua mentions a certain king of Geza who had gone to help his countrymen in Lachish, where he met his death. Geza is listed in the book of Joshua as a Levitical city, one of ten allotted to the Levite children of Kehoth, the Kohathites. Chapter 1 Section 2 Subsection 2 The Egyptian Sack of Geza According to the Hebrew Bible, the only source for both the existence of Solomon and this particular event, the Sack of Geza took place at the beginning of the 10th century BCE, when the city was conquered and burned by an unnamed Egyptian pharaoh identified by some with Siamun, during his military campaign in Philistia. This anonymous Egyptian pharaoh then gave it to King Solomon, as the dowry of his daughter. Solomon then rebuilt Geza and fortified it. The Bible states, King Solomon, build, the wall of, Geza, pharaoh king of Egypt had gone up and captured Geza and burned it with fire, and had killed the Canaanites who lived in the city, and had given it as dowry to his daughter, Solomon's wife. Chapter 1 Section 2 Subsection 3 Identifying the Biblical Pharaoh The only mention in the Bible of a pharaoh, who might be see immune is the text from 1 Kings quoted above, and we have no other historical sources that clearly identify what really happened. As shown below, Kenneth Kitchen believes that see immune conquered Geza and gave it to Solomon. Others such as Paul S. Ash and Mark W. Chivalis disagree, and in 2001 Chivalis states that it is impossible to conclude which Egyptian monarch ruled concurrently with David and Solomon. Professor Edward Lipinski argues that Geza, then unfortified, was destroyed late in the 10th century, and that the most likely pharaoh was Shoshankai. The attempt at relating the destruction of Geza to the hypothetical relationship between Siamun and Solomon cannot be justified factually, since Siamun's death precedes Solomon's accession. Chapter 1 Section 2 Subsection 4 Tanis Temple Relief One fragmentary but well-known surviving triumphal relief scene from the Temple of Amun at Tanis believed to be related to the sack of Geza depicts an Egyptian pharaoh smiting his enemies with a mace. According to the Egyptologist Kenneth Kitchen, this pharaoh is Siamun. The pharaoh appears here in typical pose brandishing a mace to strike down prisoners now lost at the right except for two arms and hands, one of which grasps a remarkable double-bladed axe by its socket. The writer observes that this double-bladed axe or halberd has a flared crescent-shaped blade which is close in form to the Aegean-influenced double axe but is quite distinct from the Canaanite double-headed axe, which has a different shape that resembles an X thus. Kitchen concludes Siamun's foes were the Philistines who were descendants of the Aegean-based Sea Peoples and that Siamun was commemorating his recent victory over the Mekeza by depicting himself in a formal battle scene relief at the temple in Tanis. More recently Paul S. Ash has put forward a detailed argument that Siamun's relief portrays a fictitious battle. He points out that in Egyptian reliefs Philistines are never shown holding an axe, and that there is no archaeological evidence for Philistines using axes. He also argues that there is nothing in the relief to connect it with Philistia or the Levant. 
Chapter 1 Section 3, Hellenistic and Roman Period Josephus writes that a certain Gadara was one of the five Sindria, or regional administrative capitals of the Hasmonean realm, established by the Roman proconsul of Syria, Gabinius, in 57 BCE. The name has been edited to Gazara in the Loeb edition, in accordance with an identification of Gadara with Geza. However, other researchers prefer one of two candidates from Transjordan, Gadara in Peia, or Gadara of the Decapolis. Chapter 2, Location Geza was located on the northern fringe of the Shepala region, approximately 30 kilometers northwest of Jerusalem. It was strategically situated at the junction of the Via Maris, the international coastal highway, and the highway connecting it with Jerusalem through the Valley of Ayalon, or Adulon. Verification of the identification of this site with Biblical Geza comes from bilingual inscriptions in either Hebrew or Aramaic, and Greek, found engraved on rocks several hundred meters from the Tell. These inscriptions from the 1st century BCE read Boundary of Geza and of Alkios. Chapter 3, History Chapter 3 Section 1, Chalcolithic the first settlement established at Tel Geza dates to the end of the 4th millennium BC during the Chalcolithic period, when large caves cut into the rock were used as dwellings. Chapter 3 Section 2, Bronze Age Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 2 Early Bronze Age At the beginning of the Early Bronze Age, an unfortified settlement covered the Tel. It was destroyed in the middle of the 3rd millennium BCE, and subsequently abandoned for several centuries. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 3 Middle Bronze Age In the Middle Bronze Age IB, Geza became a major city, well fortified and containing a large cultic site. It may have grown due to Mbaya sites like Afek becoming weaker. Fortifications The fortifications consisted of two lines of defense surrounding the Tell. First, an outer earthen rampart circa 5 meters high, built of compacted alternating layers of chalk and earth covered with plaster. Second, a 4 meter wide inner wall made of large stone blocks, reinforced with towers. The city gates stood near the southwest corner of the wall, was flanked by two towers which protected the wooden doors, a common design for its time. The tell was surrounded by a massive stone wall and towers, protected by a five-meter-high earthen rampart covered with plaster. The wooden city gate, near the southwestern corner of the wall, was fortified by two towers. Cultic site with Maspot cultic remains discovered in the northern part of the tell were a row of ten large standing stones, known as Maspot or Matsevat, singular Masiva slash Matseva, oriented north-south, the tallest of which was three meters high, with an altar-type structure in the middle, and a large, square, stone basin, probably used for cultic libations. The exact purpose of these megaliths is still debated, but they may have constituted a Canaanite high place from the Middle Bronze Age, ca. 1600 BC, each Masiba possibly representing a Canaanite city connected together by treaties enforced by rituals performed here. Both the number and size of the standing stones confer a unique character to this cultic site. Such Maspot are found elsewhere in the country, but those from Geza Maspot are the most impressive examples. A double cave beneath the high place was shown to be predating it and not connected to it. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 4 Late Bronze Age The Canaanite city was destroyed in a fire, presumably in the wake of a campaign by the Egyptian pharaoh Tutmose III. The oldest known historical reference to the city is to be found on an inscription of conquered sites at Tutmose's temple at Karnak. A destruction layer from this event was found in all excavated areas of the Tel. The Telamana letters, dating from the 14th century BC, include ten letters from the kings of Geza swearing loyalty to the Egyptian pharaoh. The city-state of Geza was ruled by four leaders, during the twenty-year period covered by the Amana letters. Discoveries of several pottery vessels, a cache of cylinder seals and a large scarab with the cartouche of Egyptian pharaoh Amenhotep III attest to the existence of a city at Geza's location in the 14th century BCE, one that was apparently destroyed in the next century, 
and suggest that the city was inhabited by Canaanites with strong ties to Egypt. Dot in the late Bronze Age a new city wall, four meters thick, was erected outside the earlier one. It is a very rare example of late Bronze Age fortifications in the country, witness for the elevated political status of Geza in southern Canaan during Egyptian rule. In the 14th century BCE, a palace was constructed on the high western part of the Tell, the city's Acropolis. Archaeologists also discovered remains of what might have been the Egyptian governor's residence from the same period in the northern part of the Tell. Toward the end of the Bronze Age, the city declined and its population diminished. Chapter 3 Section 3, Iron Age In 12th-11th centuries BC, a large building with many rooms and courtyards was situated on the Acropolis. Grinding stones and grains of wheat found among the sherds indicate that it was a granary. Local and Philistine vessels attest to a mixed Canaanite-slash-Philistine population. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 2 Tiglath Pileser 3 and the Neo-Assyrian Period The Neo-Assyrian king Tiglath Pileser 3 put Geza under siege between the years 734 and 732 BC. The city was probably captured by the Assyrians at the end of the campaign of Tiglath Pileser III to Canaan. A reference to Geza may have appeared in a cuneiform relief from the 8th century BCE royal palace of Tiglath Pileser III at Nimrud. The siege may have been the one depicted on a stone relief at the royal palace in Nimrud, where the city was called Gazru. Chapter 3 Section 4 Hellenistic Period During the Hellenistic period, Geza was fortified by the Maccabees and was ruled by the independent Jewish Hasmonean dynasty. Chapter 3 Section 5, Roman and Byzantine Periods Geza was sparsely populated during Roman times and later times, as other regional population centers took its place. Chapter 3 Section 6, Crusader Period In 1177, the plains around Geza were the site of the Battle of Mont Gizard, in which the Crusaders under Baldwin IV defeated the forces of Saladin. There was a Crusader lordship of Mont Gizard, and apparently a castle stood there, a short distance from Ramlay. Chapter 3 Section 7, Early Modern and Modern Periods Chapter 4, Archaeological Findings Archaeological excavation at Geza has been going on since the early 1900s, and it has become one of the most excavated sites in Israel. The site was identified with ancient Geza by Charles Simon Clermont Gano in 1871. R. A. Stuart McAllister excavated the site between 1902 and 1909 on behalf of the Palestine Exploration Fund. McAllister recovered several artifacts and discovered several constructions and defenses. He also established Geza's habitation strata, though due to poor stratigraphical methods, these were later found to be mostly incorrect. Other notable archaeological expeditions to the site were made by Alan Rowe, G. Wright, William Dever and Joe Seeger between 1964 and 1974 on behalf of the Nelson Gluck School of Archaeology in the Hebrew Union College, again by Dever in 1984 and 1990, as well as the Andrews University. Excavations were renewed in June 2006 by a consortium of institutions under the direction of Steve Ortiz of the Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, and Sam Wolfe of the Israel Antiquities Authority. The Tel Geza Excavation and Publication Project is a multidisciplinary field project investigating the Iron Age history of Geza. The first season of the Geza excavations concluded successfully and revealed some interesting details. Among other things is a discovery of a thick destruction layer may be dated to the destruction at the hands of the Egyptians, which some associate with the biblical episode from 1 Kings 9:16. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had attacked and captured Geza, killing the Canaanite population and burning it down. He gave the city to his daughter as a wedding gift when she married Solomon. 1 Kings 9:16 NLT vertical bar date equals November 2020 in 2013. Two separate archaeological survey excavations were conducted at Tel Geza, the one by Sikatsuk, Yohanan Haggai, and Daniel Warner, on behalf of the IAA, 
and the other led by a team of archaeologists from the SWPTS and Andrews University's Institute of Archaeology. Chapter 4 Section 1, Canaanite Water System A large Canaanite water system comprising a tunnel going down to a spring, similar to those found in Jerusalem, Hazor, and Megiddo, was first excavated by McAllister and was re-excavated as part of the 2006-17 campaigns of the Tel Geza Excavation and Publication Project. Chapter 4 Section 2, Geza Calendar One of the best-known finds is the Geza Calendar. This is a plaque containing a text appearing to be either a schoolboy's memory exercises, or something designated for the collection of taxes from farmers. Another possibility is that the text was a popular folk song, or child song, listing the months of the year according to the agricultural seasons. It has proved to be of value by informing modern researchers of ancient Middle Eastern script and language, as well as the agricultural seasons. Chapter 4 Section 3, Israelite City Gate, Wall in 1957 Yigel Yadin identified a wall and six-chambered gateway very similar in construction to remains excavated at Megiddo, and Hazor as Solomonic, they have since been reinterpreted by some as dating from several centuries later. Chapter 4 Section 4, Boundary Stones Thirteen boundary stones have been identified near the Tell, distanced between less than 200 meters to almost 2 kilometers from it, probably dating from the late Hellenistic period, the most recent having been found by archaeologists from SWBTS in 2012. See also location. There are only a few lost biblical cities that have been positively identified through inscriptions discovered by means of archaeological work. Geza is the first among them thanks to Clermont Gano's discovery of three such inscribed stones in 1874 and of a fourth in 1881. Ten of the thirteen inscriptions are bilingual, including the first three ones, containing two distinct parts, one in Greek and one either Hebrew or Aramaic, and written in what is known as square Hebrew characters. Clermont Gano's reading of the Hebrew slash Aramaic part as the boundary of Geza was later confirmed. The inscription's Greek part contains personal names either Alkios, Alexas, or Archelaus, for instance Clermont Gano's four stones were all bearing the inscription of Alkios. Sometimes the two parts are upside down, or Tete Besh, in relation to each other, on the last discovered one the lines being separated by a line and the Hebrew slash Aramaic inscription to Mgeza facing the tell. With the discovery of the last nine inscriptions it became evident that their distribution does not support Clermont Gano's initial interpretation, of them marking Geza's Sabbath limit, but rather that they probably mark the boundaries between private estates, or between city land and these estates. Analysis of the lettering have led to the conclusion that they were all contemporaneous, with opinions based on paleography and history slightly diverging in regard to their date, either Hasmonean or Herodian. The earlier date and the Hebrew script can be connected to what we know from the first book of Maccabees about Simon replacing the Gentile inhabitants with Jewish ones the later date can be supported by a scenario in which Herod, after acquiring the lands of the vanquished Hasmoneans, gave them to Alkios, Archelaus and Alexas, all three names mentioned by Josephus for members of a powerful, land-owning family from Herod's court. Chapter 4 Section 4 Subsection 2 Language Hebrew or Aramaic. According to David M. Jacobson, who states that the inscriptions are in Hebrew, this is an interesting fact, considering that Aramaic was the common administrative language in Judea by the late Second Temple period. Other scholars are not convinced that the language of the inscriptions is indeed Hebrew, not Aramaic, leaving both options as possible, as is the case in the Corpus Inscriptionum Ioe slash Palestini. Chapter 4, Section 5. Egyptian era, remains? In July 2017, archaeologists discovered skeletal remains of a family of three, one of the adults and a child wearing earrings, believed to have been killed during an Egyptian invasion in the 13th century BCE. A 13th century BCE amulet, various scarabs and cylinder seals were also found on the site. The amulet bears the cartouches or official royal monikers, of the Egyptian pharaohs Tutmos III and Ramses II.